The Fablemans was directed by Steven Spielberg and stars Gabriel LaBelle as Sammy Fableman, Seth Rogen as Benny, and Michelle Williams and Paul Dano as Sam's mother and father. The Fablemans is about the life of Sam Fableman who fell in love with films as a kid after his parents took him to see his first film, and how he got into making films after that. And this is a semi-autobiography because it's loosely related on the early life of Steven Spielberg and how he got into making films. And I love movies about making movies and about movies. I can tell when a film and a filmmaker has a love for movies. I get that a lot from Quentin Tarantino, and I got this so much from this film. Needless to say, I went into this with a ton of anticipation. It's a new Spielberg film about his life, and Spielberg did not disappoint here. This was a beautiful film. I love this movie. This is probably one of my favorite movies of the year. I went into this expecting to see a great film. I left having watched an amazing movie. I love this movie. There's so much heart. It's so emotional. There were times when, honestly, I was tearing up just because of how beautiful it was. It's just an amazing story, and the fact that a lot of this is true really adds to it. It was just amazing seeing how he started his journey as a filmmaker, just making small home videos. And there's so many unexpected twists and turns and family dynamics that happened, even with kind of knowing a lot about his life already. It was still really interesting the way it was presented, and the acting and the performances here just enhanced that tenfold. They were fantastic. Gabriel LaBelle stole the film. He was amazing as Sam Fableman. I don't think I've seen him in anything else that I'm aware of, but he did such an amazing job here. I'm excited to see where else he goes. Michelle Williams as Sam's mom also sold the movie for me a little bit. She was so supportive of him and his filmmaking, and it was a big difference from the way his dad, played by Paul Dano, was. And he's more into computers and science and math and just sort of that type of brain versus his mom who's more artsy and kind of understands him more it was just a great dynamic and the way it was acted out was perfect it was just so beautiful these performances need recognition definitely I mean especially Paul Dano I've never seen him in a role like this I mean last time we saw him was the Riddler so it's just cool to see his range like this it's really exciting and I have to talk about Seth Rogen for a while I wasn't sure if it was him I actually had to check later and it ended up being him because I'll be honest, I usually don't like him in most movies. I usually get annoyed of his humor, but he played a really different character in this film and fit perfectly. I mean, almost so well. Like I said, I wasn't sure if it was even him. So really good job from Seth Rogen here. And although this film is a little bit long with a runtime of two and a half hours, I wasn't ready for it to be over. And my fiance who I was with said the exact same thing. Now with that said, I do see this movie maybe asking a little bit too much of audiences that aren't as into it as me and my fiance. I will say that. And I felt the same way with Bridge of Lies with Tom Hanks. Great movie. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. But I felt the same way there. It's an amazingly directed movie. It's a fantastic performance from Tom Hanks with a great storyline, but I could see it asking a little bit too much of audiences, and I saw that in the theater I was in for that movie. People were getting a little bit restless towards the end. I could see that happening here, only because towards the third act, it started to slow down a little bit, but honestly, I had to nitpick to even think of that, and I'll just tell you right now, that's my only negative for this film. It's one of those rare experiences that you get in the cinema every once in a while where it takes you to another place, and that's how I felt here. I felt like I really was seeing the love and passion of a young filmmaker who wanted to make movies really bad. And Steven Spielberg directed this, and needless to say, it's very well directed. It kind of goes without saying with him, but I will say it's such a beautiful movie. I loved looking at it. Just everything about it was so beautiful. And I think when film critics say things like that, it can come off as a little bit pretentious, but really what I mean, and it's not just for cinephiles, I think anyone going into this film can just appreciate how well made this movie is. It really sells the time period that that it's in. It sells the story of a young kid growing up in love with film, wanting to make movies. It sells the story of a really interesting family dynamic and what happens over the years. It feels very realistic. It feels like that really did happen, which after reading, it sounds like for the most part, that was all true. It really sells the coming of age story of a young filmmaker who loves movies and just wants to make movies and doesn't know what else to do with their life because that's what they love. I just love that. And for me, I've always wanted to create something, always wanted to allow my creative side to sort of lead me. And it's been really hard for a lot of my life. It's just one of those things I think everyone wants to do and it's just hard to actually make it happen. So it's really special, I think, for anyone to go to the theater and see a movie like this, especially with knowing what ended up happening. I mean, Steven Spielberg is one of the greatest directors of all time, so it's 
it makes it a little bit better. But this movie successfully makes Spielberg really relatable. Although it's based on a fictional character, it is based on his life and it makes him relatable. It makes you realize that he was a kid with dreams once too. He just made it happen. He was relentless and made his way into Hollywood. All that to say that this is a hugely inspirational film, but I think it also does something else. I think it reminds audiences the power of movies and just how powerful cinema is. The reason I say that is because I find the timing interesting. The state of movies right now is not good. Marvel and DC kind of take it over. They sort of dictate when people come to the cinema and even big name directors aren't able to get people in seats. I mean, look at Ridley Scott's The Last Duel. I mean, he's talked about how he doesn't support Marvel because of how it's destroying film. Now, I don't have such an extreme stance on that, but I will say for a lot of directors, I could see where they're coming from. If you're a huge director and you've successfully entertained audiences for decades with amazing films like Ridley Scott or Steven Spielberg, you would think that if you have an idea, you can get that movie made. But it sounds like that's not the case in Hollywood anymore for original ideas. So it's kind of cool to see a movie like this. And I do find it interesting. I wonder if the current state of things had anything to do with this getting made, because I really do think this reminds you of the power of an original idea from an original mind, from an independent director's brain. I think that's really important in an age where Marvel movies, DC movies, a lot of these IPs like Star Wars films, they all feel like you can't see a director behind it. There's a director who's hired to create the film that they want them to create. That's a different world than the, the world that Spielberg's depicting in this movie. Now, as of the date that I'm filming this, Wednesday, November 23rd, this movie did get a wide release in more theaters, so I was able to see it. But I know for a lot of people, this film already had a small release in a lot of smaller theaters, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. It was actually hard for me to find any showings for this, and when I did, we were like the only people in the theater. There was maybe a few more, but it was a really small theater. It's really sad to see. I mean, this is a Steven Spielberg film about his life, and it was incredible, 10 times better than Wakanda Forever and all the other crap coming out. I like Wakanda Forever, don't get me wrong, but after seeing this, it's like, holy crap, this just reminded me how much of a master this guy is. I mean, wow. You have to go check this movie out. I hope you're able to see it. If you are, definitely check it out because you will not regret it. It is a fantastic film with so much heart and soul, something that we don't get a whole lot of anymore. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what are your thoughts on The Fableman if you're able to see it, and look forward to my True Lies review coming out next week, and then after that, a review of the Titanic that I'll be doing with my fiance. That's her favorite film of all time, so I'm really excited to talk to her about it. It's going to be a really good time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Seriously, I really appreciate the growth on this channel. It's making me so happy. It's just awesome getting to talk about movies, so thank you guys for watching. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.